In 2009, when I left the priesthood, I moved from Rome here to Barcelona, where I knew no one. And in the first years, I did not tell anybody that uh, I used to be a priest. So it was not uncommon for me to find myself in conversations about religion where the people I was talking to did not know that they were talking to a former priest. Nonetheless, I'd state my views with authority and conviction. So I thought. To my surprise, folks didn't seem to care much for my views. Everyone had an opinion, and most of those were poor. Choose not to have an opinion. Choose not to have an opinion for three reasons. Looks, brains, and load. Looks. A study from Cornell University shows that 65% of people overestimates their intelligence. Now, I am sure you are part of the other 35%, but tell me, how easy is it for you to keep up to date with everything that comes out in your field? How about the other fields? Would I be taking it too far if I said that when we talk about things we're not really up to date with, chances are we're going to look like idiots? Choose not to have an opinion. Choose not to have an opinion not only for looks, but also for brains. The great Greek philosopher Epictetus said, It is impossible for someone to begin to learn what they think they already know. Opinions are a way of thinking we know. To keep your brain sharp, choose not to have an opinion. But more important than looks and brains, choose not to have an opinion for load. In the seminary, they made us study a whole bunch of stuff. And here are just a few, and let me read so that I don't skip any of them. Philosophy, history of philosophy, history of religion, psychology, history of psychology, pedagogy, didactics, sociology, sociology of religion, faith, reason, trinity, Christology, liturgy, church fathers, sacraments, Bible studies, social ethics, sexual ethics, bioethics, homiletics. So yeah, as a priest, I had an opinion about everything. Politics, gender, race, sexual orientation, panda bears, education, drugs, parenting, pizza toppings, minorities, climate change, diet, and on and on. And it was horrible. It was such a cognitive load to have to formulate a logical and relevant opinion. And then to make it consistent with my opinions about everything else. It was terrible. It was a load because when I had an opinion, it was really the opinion that had me. And I can't begin to tell you how much it is of a relief to choose not to have an opinion. Nowadays, when folks ask me, do you still believe in God? I say, sometimes. Choose not to have an opinion. For these three reasons, looks, brains, and load, repeat after me. Dear brain, I hereby relieve you from the duty of formulating opinions about everything. From now on, I choose not to have an opinion. Amen. Those conversations back in 2009 are still today a reminder for me to keep my mouth shut and smile.